Some years ago, I realized that there are some lost years regarding Jesus' life, years that are so important to you and me that I had better do something about it because Christianity had been deprived of that preparatory period to Jesus' final mission. And so I got together with my research staff and we took about three or four years researching the lost years of Jesus. So this book was published, I think in about 85, and it is a compilation of what we found out. It is not a book of religious teaching, it is purely a history book. And it chronicles the discoveries of certain Buddhist manuscripts in a Buddhist monastery in Ladakh. The monastery is called Himis, and it is at Leh, Ladakh. And there we find that 100 years ago, this November, Nicholas Notovich, a Russian journalist, came upon manuscripts documenting that Jesus spent 17 years of his life in the East. We have here then a historical problem. No record of Jesus after age 12 when he was discoursing in the temple with the doctors. This was a very important moment in his life. It is celebrated today by Jews as the bar mitzvah and by Christians as a confirmation. We are expected to know something of our religion and its teachings by this age, and we are examined therefore. They were very impressed with Jesus. He was both hearing them and asking them questions. We do not see Jesus until the age of 30 when he is baptized by John the Baptist in Jordan. Jesus was probably born between 8 BC and 4 BC. He spent his early life in Palestine. His parents took him to Memphis, Egypt. Right after his birth, Joseph being warned by an angel. They stayed there three years as they were instructed to do so until the death of Herod. There are legends throughout the British Isles that say that the great uncle Joseph of Arimathea, who was a tin merchant and had a fleet of ships, actually took Jesus to the British Isles and to Glastonbury. He sailed on those trade routes to the Isles and at this period, throughout the British Isles, there was a very high level of education. The Druids had their universities. Thus, we may suppose, especially if we are wont to pay attention to the poetry, the legends, the many pictures, and all kinds of information you get when you go to Glastonbury, that Jesus frequented that country as a boy. It is even said that he built with his Joseph, uh, the first church, the first Christian church. It was a, a wattle mud hut. Scholars assume that at the age of 12, Jesus was a carpenter in Palestine. I would like you to know that there are absolutely zero facts to support that theory. Joseph passed on sometime after age 12 or before. And it was his uncle Joseph of Arimathea who cared for him. We find then that the theory of him joining that uncle on his ships and going to the British Isles is not in any way illogical. It is not necessary, however, to reject it or to accept it, but just to know that it exists. Now, the ancient Buddhist manuscripts that were discovered by Nicholas Notovich say that Jesus spent his lost years in the East. The texts of these were originally recorded by Buddhist historians in Pali, the sacred language of the Theravada Buddhist canon, and that they were later translated into Tibetan. You can see then Notovich and the monastery. Notovich published them as the life of Saint Isa in his work, The Unknown Life of Jesus Christ. 
there was great controversy about Nicholas Notovich. Most of the prominent theologians of this country attempted to prove him a charlatan. I go over this meticulously because all of this material is dug up today by people who still want to debunk the theory that Jesus went to the Far East. So this is gone over in great detail in the introduction to my work. Just at the point when he has almost lost the day, new evidence comes that he indeed was telling the truth and this was a real manuscript. I don't even attempt to conclude that in the book, but to leave to the reader to examine all the evidence I present and to decide for yourself. What I have found, however, is that multiple persons have seen these documents and the next one in question came to the same place, Hemis, in 1922. He was a scholar and disciple of the Indian Saint Ramakrishna. He taught in Britain and he was known by Western scholars, highly respected Swami Avedananda. Then along came Nicholas Rorick in 1925. He was another Russian who left uh, Russia about the time of the revolution. He saw these documents in 1925. He was an archaeologist, author, artist, and philosopher, and he made a five-year trek to the Himalayas. He trekked all over this territory during a five-year period, and he was such a prolific artist that he produced 5,000 paintings of the artist, and I've selected among the best of those to put in this book so you could see the tremendous work he did. Now what he discovered because of his vast travels was the oral tradition of the region. Everywhere he went, people were talking about Saint Isa, as they called Jesus. They also called him a Buddha. And he made a very pointed remark. He said, in what possible way could a recent forgery penetrate into the consciousness of the whole East? He also came to him as also was aware of the documents. Then in 1939, on a spiritual pilgrimage, totally unaware of any such documents purported to exist at Hemis, came Mrs. Clarence Gask from Britain with a tour of pilgrims, and among them was educator Dr. Elizabeth Kaspari of Switzerland. And as they were there, up on the roof one day of Hemis, the librarian presented them a set of parchments saying, these books say your Jesus was here. Elizabeth Kaspari's husband took a, a lot of photographs of this trip and he caught that picture. He was right there and took the picture of the monk presenting them. This was the first that these people had ever even heard that there were such documents in existence. I've published in this book a lot of the pictures that they also took in the Himis area. Just about the time we were concluding this book and its research, there came to light that in 1951, Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas traveled to Himis, and he wrote in his book, recording his travels, quote, there are those who to this day believe that Jesus visited the place, that he came here when he was 14 and left when he was 28 heading west to be heard of no more. The legend fills in the details saying that Jesus traveled to Hymas under the name of Isa." End of quote. I would like to then give you the chronology of Jesus' travels to the east pieced together from the Buddhist manuscripts discovered at Hymas. It is also taken from the oral tradition. Age 13, Jesus departs Jerusalem with merchants, and he sets out towards the Sindh. It's a region in the present day southeast Pakistan in the lower Indus River Valley. And his purpose was with the object of perfecting himself in the divine word and studying the laws of the great Buddhas. Now this is a tremendous statement. It's out of the text and all of these are reproduced in this volume. Now, if you can identify with Jesus as your brother and not as a Roman god, made such a god that he is far 